the best of the game, the game of football, performed by Colin Dean and written by Colin Dean and Peter West. And hopefully that will become the signature tune of Tasmanian football and some great editing pieces there from the production team back at the ABC. Great atmosphere here at the North Hobart Oval and the players are due in about five or six minutes time and everyone's nervously anticipating the arrival of the players and also the umpires. There is the Clarence banner going for back-to-back -back premierships today, the Roos. And their huge chances to do it. Rated five to two on, Clarence. Must be a nervous time for supporters because we've had the reserves game and now it's just a long wait for the final moment of the 1994 season. Their team hopefully winning the TFL Premiership. Not a bad crowd in, Gareth. Terrific crowd, Rob. I, I guess it's uh, approaching 12, 13,000 now. The sun's out. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that those squally uh, gusts that come over the mountain with the rain can stay away. And just repeating for our southern viewers, there was some doubt about our coverage this afternoon. We are going live statewide. So the south of the state will get the whole game. It's a first for TFL football. We thank them very much for allowing us the opportunity to bring what we think is the best example of Tasmanian sport. And let's hope that today's game can only encourage more people to get behind TFL football. Bob, what are the players thinking about at the moment? Well, I've been casting my mind back 24 years. It's, uh, it's pretty hard to remember that. But I... Yes, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> but look, it, it's, it's a, uh, a terrific time of, of the day uh, because everybody, in, uh, both in the respective club rooms, would be uh, sitting there in anticipation of what is going to happen. Really, all they want to do is get on the ground and start the game. Uh, but uh, there'll be some butterflies. There's uh, Wignut there. <laughs> Gordon, who used to work at the ABC. He's the property steward of Clarence. And uh, he looks pretty toey as well. We've got a few problems there with our, our pictures from inside the dressing room by the looks of things. But uh, there's the Clarence boys lining up. And the new Norfolk room. And they're just going through their paces there. A few spectators in there. And plenty of encouragement and words as well. Plenty of crowd shots here this afternoon. And the weather seems to be improving. We had a couple of ordinary showers. So we got here about 10 o'clock this morning and, gee, the rain absolutely pelted down on a number of occasions. But it's been intermingled with uh, sunshine. I think we'll probably have to cope with a few showers this afternoon, but it looks to be on the improve, if anything, and sunshine adorns the North Hobart Oval at the moment. Any kids on the ground? What have the kids been doing, Gary? Well, we've got uh, a couple of groups out at half time today, Rob. We've got two little Auskick centres, one from uh, the Richmond, down, Richmond Campaigny area, one from down the Kingston area. And there's a, an under 12 modified rules game of football going across the ground at half time. Two primary school representative teams have participated in a, uh, a full carnival day way back in August. And, uh, and those young fellows are really getting a high buzz out of uh, about, about being here on grand final day. They've done their lap of honour and they come out to do another little bit at half time. Gary, remember last year, great game, wasn't it? Clarence North Launceston. Fantastic game, a great start from both sides, and I guess the, the sort of nervous energy that goes with grand finals we'll see again today, but uh, terrific game of football. We saw one side get away, Clarence come back, they got away again, they came back again, North Launceston, it, uh, just, just everything you'd really wish to see in a grand final. Best game of football I've ever seen in statewide league, and one of the best full stop. Let's have another look at it. Over to right. Stevie Wright has one bounce, can do another. Through the centre he comes, having a look upfield. Scott's waiting, picks it up on the half volley. Down to full forward, he's going to look for Richards. Richards in front, over the back, Holdsworth. Could be a goal, an opportunity. It's a goal. First one of the grand final. The Ruse drew first blood, and Paul, told, Paul Holdsworth's got one beside his name. Kremer robes it well, and Todman's got a paddock in front of him. Very open North Launceston forward line. Strickland, the leading half forward, taps it away from Fry. Here's Gibson. He'll go back to Strickland. Here's Todman. 30 out. Can kick there first. He's put it through. A goal each. Simpson picked it up in towards full forward. Chance here for North Launceston. Strickland sizes up the goals. He's put it through on the left. The Robins in front. 
Adams out towards half back. Bark got the sit. Went underneath it a bit. Kremerskoven taps it forward. It's not Kremerskoven at all. He's been brilliant. And he's kicked the goal! What a kick! What an individual effort! And they've kicked the last couple up. The Clarence got within eight points. Gibson inside 40, around the corner. This is very close. He's put it through! Great kick from the William Leach medalist of two years ago. And those Robins fans there can sense their first ever statewide flag, although don't get too excited yet. Very, very important kick as we approach time on. It'll bring the margin back to two goals if he kicks this. Mark Richards. For goal number four. He lays back on it. It's a beautiful kick, an excellent result. And they're back within two goals. Knocked away from him. And Stevie Wright burrows through. Good stuff from uh, Young Hull. He's off right. Good hands. Hand pass over to right. McCallum's out wide. Holdsworth off the hospital hand pass. Holdsworth gets shepherded. Thumps it forward towards Richie, who's out maneuvered by Al Spearman. Adams! They're within a goal! Seven marks to Scotty Adams. Bombs it in long. Richards and Richie to two R's. Falls to Holdsworth for goal number four around the corner. It's close! Oh, he's dumped it! Brownless can't pick it up. He's down of it. Hangs onto it and gets it to fry off to Winter. Winter just bombs into the forward line, gets onto the little tour, in towards full forward. Richards makes the ball his object, as does Stevie Wright. Can the captain coach seal it? He's put it through! Well, can they do it again this afternoon? There's uh, a lot of the players that played in that game out here representing Clarence today. And there are the umpires, Greg Dwyer and Mark Williams. And there's Bruce Greenhill of ABC Radio. We don't really want him in shot. Dwyer and Williams, big moment for them. Plenty of competition and healthy competition within the umpires' ranks. And those that missed out, of course, will be a bit disappointed, but a great moment for those two, as it is for the supporters here today who are just waiting for the team to come on. There's Damien Bug in the crutches. What a, a sad moment for him, as it is for Colin Alexander to his right. The two senior players that would have been certain he's picked in this Clarence lineup this afternoon. Bug out with an ankle injury. Colin Alexander has just, well, today completes a four-week suspension. And here come the Eagles onto the field. The New Norfolk fans are going berserk. Darren Denneman leading New Norfolk onto the ground. And they'll go straight through the banner. And they have got a tremendous amount of support here this afternoon. And what a big moment it is as the Derwent Valley wishes the Eagles the best of luck. And they're just about to burst through that banner. I hope we can get that shot of them coming through front on. Here goes Darren Denneman and the boys. And the Eagles are ready for the 1994 TFL Grand Final. Rob, I just saw young Matthew Smith. He's on the screen there. We had great experiences with him in the Teal Cup this year. And uh, he was so excited before they went through the, uh, through the banner. You could see him jumping up and down. And you could just... Uh, you almost get a lump in the throat when you see a young man of 17 years of age playing in a grand final. And I guess that's the, the whole process with the uh, with the Norfolk side. So many players under set, under 19 years of age. Big problems with the Clarence banner. It's not an easy day for the cheer squads today. It's very, very windy. And here come the Roos. Stevie Wright going for back-to-back -back flags. Hope that two-foot fight little fellow isn't going to play in the ruck. But Stevie Wright there urging the boys on. Of course, most of them have been in this situation before. Great excitement when they won it last year. And there's a lot of cool, wise heads in that side. Clarence, the hot favourites, look pretty cool, calm and collected, if you don't mind, as they go through the banner. They've been there before, and they'll just lap it all up. And that's pretty important too, Rob, because it's probably about 10 minutes before the first bounce of the ball in this grand final, and uh, you know, lots of players expend lots of nervous energy in that 10-minute period, and I think it's very important that the players remain focused, calm, and not get themselves too much over the top and uh, over arousal, we call it, and uh, in sports psychology terms, and they just have to have the right arousal level come that bounce of the ball to start the grand final. Not going to touch that at all, the over arousal bit. OK, Clarence and Norfolk going past each other now. And it'll be interesting to see if there's any fireworks. Clarence have a reputation as being a pretty rough and ready side to match up their great skill, Bob, do you think? will be any rough stuff? Oh, look, I think that both sides will test each other out at the first bounce and uh, certainly in the first five minutes of the game. And it's interesting that uh, David Young has been included in the starting 18. So 
uh, that might be a, a sign of things to come. I, but look, I mean, it's a grand final. Everything's at stake, and uh, we have to expect some sort of uh, physical contact. Well, Darren Denham has got to do up the boots there. But let's quickly now have a look at the lineups of the respective side. Gary, Clarence? Well, fairly settled, and I guess uh, I'll, be, I'll be very surprised to see Donato start in the back pocket. Richard's there at, at uh, centre half back, and, and really does have to play back there because there are only two genuine tall defenders. And I guess really more than anything, the question of whether Winter starts on the wing or on the interchange bench and wait until some of the heat goes out of the game. Certainly Brownless and Dak are the key forwards. Noonan is one that uh, would need to be watched by Dinnerman because he does play half back and then tend to play a second centreman type role. And that often throws sides that aren't well equipped with the right homework to follow the movement of players. Particularly when it comes to the first 10, 15 minutes of a game. If he can run loose for 10 or 15 minutes unchecked, could be danger signs for uh, the New Norfolk side. Gee, there's so much talent in that Clarence lineup, as there is though in the New Norfolk lineup, as the Clarence fans prepare for what they hope will be a great moment for them this afternoon. New Norfolk, Bob Ketty. Well, interestingly, Chris Sproul uh, lining up at uh, at centre half back, he will actually start on interchange, so there is a, going to be a change certainly to that to that lineup. Not neither side will line up as you see them on the screen, but. Look, there are some very, very interesting uh, and very important matchups. You've got McCartan in the ruck. Uh, he's going to have a tremendous impact on this game. Humphrey, can he run the game out? That's the question mark. Denneman, can he run the game out? Blackaby and uh, uh, Young Horn, both very good young rovers, are going to be very, very important to them. Uh, Smith on the interchange is an important player. Stevenson and uh, uh, Dean King have been two of the unsung heroes, in my opinion, of the New Norfolk side. And they're going to be very, very important. Wilton's been strong for them on the back line, and as has Quayle. It's a real battle of youth and exuberance against classy experience here this afternoon. I'm not doubting that New Norfolk hasn't got a share of very uh, capable, experienced senior players, but really it's been Browning, Blackaby, Smith and uh, Higgins, who have been tremendous in the last month, and they've really become established senior, senior TFL players to match uh, you know, their established stars like Humphrey, Denham and McCartan. There's Fry and Brownless as the Clarence boys go through their paces. Rob, I don't think we can uh, afford to forget the fact that uh, Richards and Winter haven't played for quite some time. And David Young, uh, what a week it's been for him. He's announced that this will be his last game, the 30-year-old Norfolk player there, just stretching from <coughs> side to side, talking to 29 Tim Edwards. And David's wife gave birth to a child, so... Uh, Joshua. You know, Joshua. I read the paper as well. So, great moment for David. And, and you now, what, what more appropriate moment to go out in your football career than with a premiership? And he spent a fair bit of time on the interchange bench too. And have a look at that for a haircut on Michael Gurry back on there. Um, got a special haircut for the grand final, I think. So uh, pretty mean looking customer with the locks shorn off. Thanks, Gary. Quickly down to John Kenny at, ba at boundary level. He's looking after New Norfolk this afternoon. John? Well, I tell you what, Davo, I'm aroused because the atmosphere down here is absolutely tremendous. The Weather Bureau has said 11 degrees. Occasional showers, gusty westerly, southwesterly winds. Well, the showers have gone, the sun is out, the oval in perfect condition, and I tell you what, the hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. It's tremendous. The supporters getting involved in ready. And I know Chris Smythe is aroused because he's right there out in the middle. What's it like, Smythe? Oh, it's total over aroused over here, Johnny. It's absolutely tremendous. The crowd's on edge. The atmosphere is fantastic. The weather's turned it on for us. And look, it's just going to be a wonderful game, and the stage is set for a terrific match. It really is going to be the, the highlight of the year as far as the TFL season goes. Chris Smythe and John Kenny. Let's now pause for the Australian National Anthem.
Okay, that's the uh, national anthem there, and the teams broke up early, unfortunately, and they're off. I don't really think they want to listen to the national anthem, perhaps not like another coach. The rugby union boys take it very seriously, and I'm sure these players do, but it's a, always a, a very nervous moment, and it's just about the final commitment they've had, and they've had weeks of commitments. Everyone's after them, supporters wishing them all the best. Of course, the media asks a lot, and now the final release of energy for the players. There's the toss. Gary Sweet tossing the coin. Hope it didn't bury it did, did it? No. Stevie Wright's won the toss, and he's kicking left of screen down to the Doug place to stand in. Danny Holm and Darren Winter. Who knows, this could be Daniel Holmes' last game in the TFL as the Roo could be off to an AFL career. Gee, Rob, that's an important toss to win. The wind at the moment, Gary, what would you estimate it to be? It's bordering on five or six goals, Bob, but it's pushing the wind, uh, will push the ball into the, the scoreboard forward pocket. You can see the flag, uh, probably not a good example of how strong it is blowing into that windsock, but uh, gusting winds, temperature 11, so uh, the comfort level in, in terms of uh, dehydration will be okay for the players today. But very important toss, as you say, your Norfolk may have to change their approach to the start of this game, given that they've lost the toss and are going to be kicking into a very, very, very strong breeze. Well, often in the first 10 or 15 minutes, though, of grand finals, there's a lot of nervous energy out there. It's, it's usually pretty scrambly. If they can hold it in for the first 10 or 15 minutes before Clarence get organised, it might work in their favour. David Young looks like he's going to line up in that uh, back line that's uh, been a very, very settled side over a number of weeks, the New Norfolk side, so we won't see too many surprises. There may well be a couple of matchups, and it'd be interesting to see what New Norfolk do if Paul Holdsworth, in fact, does tag Paul Humphreys and do the similar job that he did on Young Brody from the Sandy Bay side a couple of weeks ago. We might go around and get a selection now from our commentary crew, which includes Gary Davidson, Bob Keddie, Chris Smythe and John Kenny, and yours truly, Rob Waters. Firstly, Bob Kitty Hall win. Clarence, 27 points. Gary Davidson. Clarence, 47, Rob. I hope we're in position to go down to the boundary line. Firstly, John Kenny, who do you think will win? I think John's predicting New Norfolk to win this afternoon. And not sure whether we can go down to Chris Meyer on the boundary line. Rob, I'd love to see New Norfolk Firstly, get up, but my gut feel is Clarence with their strength and their numbers and their experience will have it over the Eagles. But if the Eagles are still there at half time, it's going to be anyone's game. Chris Smythe going for Clarence and down to John Kenny. To Darren Denneman early and New Norfolk and I'll stick to it. New Norfolk by 14 points. John Kenny out on a limb and we're away in the 1994 grand final. I better pick one I suppose. Clarence by 20 points for me. I'll tell you what, David Young's on deck and is he, is he giving him a serve? Young on deck, Sproul away from full forward. Home playing on Hill, could have predicted that one. And we're away in the 1994 TFL Grand Final. McCartan wins the first tap, but it's taken by Holdsworth. Kicks back towards half forward, but it's been courageously marked by Craig Stevenson, who'll play at centre-half back today. Morby brings it wide on nervous kick. Intercepted by Dak. He'll snap a goal. It's close. It's a great start for Clarence. It's a goal. It's extraordinary bad luck for Brett Morby. He seemed to slip just as he was kicking the ball, and... Uh... Gee, I know there are a couple of decisions with the goal umpires last week, but for mine, that didn't look like it was a goal. But I agree with you, Gary. To me, that missed by a metre. But she's down in the book, Bob, and uh, gee, what a perfect start, given that uh, David Young has obviously got the big job to harass, both physically and mentally, Paul Dack and the goal square. Ex-teammates, and it's going to be shoulder on shoulder. Dean McCartan. Dean gets that hit out. Quite decisive. Denman with good hands. Intercepted. Ball's underneath the pack there. Paul Holsworth comes up with it. The free kick's going to go to Darren Denneman. Against Jones, Bob. He just threw him out of the way. So Matthew Jones, Denneman with the ball. Kicks it high towards centre-half forward. Richards from behind. Takes White off the ball. The ball's at ground level. Wade taps it out of the pack. Horn held with the ball. He'll get a free kick inside 50. Lee Horn with the free kick for New Norfolk. It's going to take a very good kick to get it that distance. And now a free kick has been paid for interference in the goal square. So almost certainly a goal. 
Darren Winter on your screen. And if it's not careful, he's going to put him right on the goal line. Well, this could develop. There's a few thrown in that exchange, and, and they're into it in the goal square. Fry involved. Isles kicked the goal. Perfect answer, really, wasn't it? The altercation continues. McCallum's got the job on Isel today, and he's getting a mouthful now, so... It's going to be fairly uh, fairly tough early, as we predicted. But there's plenty of, uh, what do they call it in cricket, sledging in cricket. I don't know whether it has the same look. He's got a bit of clarity. And in fact, Rob, given that his eye is bleeding, Darren Winter, he should be going off the field to have that uh, wiped and uh, not allowed to come back on until the bleeding stops. And it doesn't look as though the umpires have picked that up. I wonder, I actually, I wonder, Gary, whether the New Orford players would point that out. If I was Dean King, I certainly would be doing it. Well, if he keeps giving away those free kicks, they want him on the field, don't they? Centre bounce, McCartan gets a hit down. Fantastic by Humphrey, but it goes out to Noonan. Noonan ducks inside, drops the ball, flicks it off the ground. Richie, we've got Cullen in support, on his left foot, in towards the full forward line. Picked off by Blackaby, over to Wilton. Gurry into the centre of the ground. Noonan sits underneath, can't mark the ball. Good play by Richard Hill. He finds Morby. Morby's kick out towards the wing. That wing really holding the ball up. Cooney taps it on in front of him. Still got control of the ball. Being pulled off it. Coming in support is Wilton. Kicks it along the ground. Dean King and the ball just tucked out of play. Well, very even contest at the moment. Clarence going with what we'd anticipate to be a five or six goal breeze left of screen. Paper strewn all over the place here in the crowd which is sizable despite the conditions Richie at centre half forward in towards full forward the knock from Gurry Dax lurking he's already kicked one here's Donato for goal number two he's kicked their second excellent running from David Donato back from Fitzroy and Carlton this year in the AFL and won't he relish playing in a Clarence Premiership if they get up this afternoon. It wasn't only the uh, the good crumbing from David Donato. It was a good knock-on by Paul Dack. He was under pressure. There was no way he was able to pull the ball out of the air. So he just fisted it on. Donato, of course, just ran on behind, kicked the easiest of goals. Well, we're back at the centre bounce. And, Rob, you've called the first three. It's my turn. Richie takes it out of the centre. Pulls the ground. Gets the free kick. Peter Ritchie will kick it long. It's high, it's well inside 50. McCart couldn't control it. Donato, quick kick out of the pack. Dak's got an opportunity. Can he get it off the ground? It's still on the ground. Dak butters up again. Snap, great smother. The ball comes out to Cooney. He snapped, it's high. And he's pulled it slightly left. So the first minor score of the game to Gavin Cooney. So Clarence, 2-1-13. You Norfolk have been into attack just once, but they're kicking against the breeze. And they fortunately scored a major. Thump down to ground. Heard in towards the pocket. Young gets there first. And the veteran call on the crisis. Kicks it out towards the wing. The only veteran in Norfolk on that occasion was Paul Humphrey. And he took the mark. Plays on quickly. They'll try and run it in and into this breeze, it's suspect. And Lee Horn, who started okay, has taken the mark, the teenager. Horn towards half forward. Richard Hill, the target. He was great last week. Scott Wade in his last game, perhaps, couldn't take it. Umpires let it go until they're forced to have a bounce with New Norfolk 70 from home. Danny Noonan on screen there with Richards and Scott Wade. Six minutes in. Knocked towards centre half forward. Noonan will get there first for the ruse. He goes long to half forward. Brandless will be the target all day. Donato, he's proving dangerous. Gets it to Brandless. He's claimed. Morby, been a very good player early. Played in a grand final side at North Hobart Morby. Perhaps the experience telling. Heard as Winter went in hard, missed. Browning off the ground. Gains about 30 metres. Hull intercepting and he sees it over the line. Gee, they're standing up to it well, Rob, the young players from New Norfolk. Young uh, Holmes tested out of there, handled it pretty well. So they're, they're settling down very nicely. 
Boundary throw in. Troy White against Richards. Thumps straight back to the boundary line. But they've been like that, Gary, in the, in, in the finals they've played to date. They've been terrific, the young boys. They've, as you say, they've put their hand up, and that's why they're here. Another boundary throw in. Richards from behind. Deniman, very important play into the centre circle. Cooney towards centre half forward. McCart, the ball beats him. Stevie Wright runs onto it, taps it forward. He's got Donata there as a supporting. Can he get out of trouble? And I think you'll find the boundary line just beat him, and that was wonderful play by New Norfolk. Quayle did a terrific job to keep that ball. McCartan out of the air for his first touch. Dropped a moment a moment to, a mark a moment to go. That'll give him some encouragement. That kick won't, however, it's uh, gone out of bounds on the ball by about 30 metres. So Dak, who certainly knows where the goals are, he's kicked 90 now for the year. Has the opportunity to kick there first. He creeps around off Paul, checking. Dax though missed everything. And he's kicked it out of bounds on the full deep into the crowd. Great to see all the patrons here. Crowd estimate around 12 or 13,000 people. And considering we almost had snow here at about 11 o'clock this morning, that is not a bad result. So Richard Gary, and isn't that a spectacular haircut Michael Gary with his kick out towards the halfback flank up high was Holdsworth uncontested and really that's not good enough in, in a grand final so Paul Holdsworth will kick from 52 meters it's a long kick it's not going to go over the back of the pack Brownless almost took it McCartan's there the ball underneath the pack and you would expect that New Norfolk would want to see this rush through for a behind. Almost nine minutes of the first quarter of the 1994 TFL Grand Final gone. McCartan heads towards goal. Is that a goal? I think he snapped it through, Stevie Wright. It's pretty close. It's a goal to Clarence their third goal. He's going bananas. Reckons he touched it. Stevie Wright, though, claimed it. And an important one for the captain coach. 3-1-19 the ruse. <laughs> you can argue all you like. It's in the centre. And Dean and McCart. McCart gets it to Humphrey. Humphrey tucks it underneath him. Very dangerous play. Dinnerman's in there. He can't get rid of the ball and we're going to have to have another ball up in the centre of the ground. Humphrey, Denneman, two vital cogs for New Norfolk. McCart beaten by Dean on that occasion. Brown trapped up. Borby, his kick smothered very well. Out to Higgins. Higgins off to Wilk. 